Okay, so for this last video on loads, we're going to talk about vertical distribution of seismic force. These equations are in your handout, your PowerPoint. So the, the force at a story, so x story, so that could be story 1, 2, or the roof in our case, times the CVx factor, which is here, times the base shear. And that basically tells us how the load distributes up into the building. So let me draw a little sketch to illustrate that, then we'll get into the numbers. Okay, so I drew this little sketch here that basically is the elevation view of the building, each floor, F1, F2, F3. And let's see, I'm missing something. Okay, F1, F2, F3, and then the height from the ground. So let me write out this equation for CVX. So CVX, oh, I don't want to move that, is equal to WHX Okay, so this W sub X is the floor at each, or the weight at each floor. We've made ours the same. H sub X is the height from the ground. So this would be H1, H2, etc. And then K is one for periods that have a period, or for structures that have a period of 0.1. A 0.5 or less, I'm sorry, let me put this here. So K is 1 for 0.5 or less. Um, up to 2.5 seconds, it's 2, and then you interpolate between them. Generally, you can say for each story, you gain a tenth of a second in period. So if we're three stories, we're probably point, around 0.3 seconds, so we're going to use a K of 1. For your design project, just use a K of 1. Um, or you can figure out what the period is from ASC 7 if you care to, but um, that's kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, so let's go back to our weight per floor. We have our total weight is 842.4. So if I divide that by 3, um, so that's equal to W1, W2, and W3. So I have 842.4 pushing too hard, over 3, so, oh, that didn't work, so 280 and change kips per floor. <clears throat> okay, so now this is where an Excel sheet is nice, so let me just do, let's do this term for um, each one. So let me let me just kind of write out of the a, the thumbnail of an Excel sheet. So I could say story three, two, one, and then W, X, H, X to the K. So in this case, for the top story, we'd be 32 feet is the height. So let's see, we have 280.7 kips is W, X times 32 feet to the first power. And then we just do that math. So I already have the 280 in there, times it by 32, 89.81. So I'm gonna keep doing this for each level. So I'm gonna have a calc for this, a calc for this. These numbers are gonna be somewhat less than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off screen or off um, the run. Okay, so rather than bore you with those calculations, I've gone through count W times the height to the K factor for each story, added them up, and so I get that. Now, the CVX is just that number divided by this number, that number divided by that, that divided by that. So I'm going to do that quickly off screen. Okay, so I went and did this for CV3. So I took that number divided by that number and got 0.516. So 
So what that tells me is 51.6% of the base shear acts at the roof. And then the other remaining 50% is going to be split between those two floors. So I'll do those calcs and we'll get back to that. Okay, so calcing the other two, two levels, we get those numbers. So 32 and change percent to the middle level. And then if I add these up, they should equal 1.0. If they don't, I did something wrong. Okay, then the final step is just to take the to find the story force, so F1, 2, and 3. And to do that, so let's do F3, we would take CV3 times the base shear. So in this case, it's CV3 times V, so 0.516. And the base shear was 66.5 kips. So cranking that out really quick. I get 34.3 kips is my story share at the roof, and then I'll count the other two, or frankly you can. So you just do 0.323 times 66.5. Okay, so I've got these numbers. Those should sum up to 66.5 as a check. If they don't, then I did something wrong so I'm going to check really quick 66.5 okay so at this point <clears throat> that's where you can stop on your load calcs you have your dead your live your snow your wind which is kind of a hassle and then your seismic which is maybe a bigger hassle but at the end of the day you're going to end up with data that for the rest of the semester you can use on your design project and data that I can look at early on and say, yeah, you're on the right track, or you screwed something up that's going to cause you problems down the road. Let's fix it now. Um, so anyway, that's it on loads. There's three videos to this series. Um, I hope you enjoy it, and I will see you in class when I see you in class.